I keep doing it because I know that I can get to where I can put everything that I am and everything that I can do together. Because I know that, I know that there's that capability there. And I know that if I can do it just right, I can express that and exhibit that and show everybody that. And in a way, I'm glad that I missed that. You know, uh, it's it's kind of about more than more than like making the weight or not. Right now, we're essentially starting from a ways back, anyways, uh, starting the prep for Worlds in November. That's gonna be my next meet. Uh, it'll be in Dubai. In terms of training this week, things are progressing pretty much at the exact rate that I had hoped for. Came in and hit the equipped squats, worked up to a 382 and a half kilo squat. So, uh, went in, pulled it, absolutely smashed it, and it was almost anticlimactic. I almost was like, oh, is that it? So we'll put Beautiful. your waist size right in the center. That way you'll have five holes to get bigger, five to get Amazing. smaller. Amazing. Yeah. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> Mike on with the alligator. Right. Uh, then we have the suede on the inside, of course, for comfort. We are going to start up the training logs for these last, I think it's five or so weeks, leading back into Worlds. We feel like this is maybe the most pertinent training, the most interesting training. It's certainly going to be the heaviest training. Managed to uh, load all the Alico plates in the gym, which is always a good feeling. And coming clean with everybody. I will be moving up a weight class. For anyone who's still wondering, I am going to be competing in the 120 kilo category. Can I credit this community around me uh, with probably a very big impact on my success. So thanks everybody. We'll see you all on the other side. This meet is the step on that staircase. I may not be hitting the podium just yet, but this performance is my debut on a bigger stage. It's making my mark and letting everyone know that I'm here and that I belong here. This is gonna be just a taste of what I'm capable of. Today, 16 second setup. Can we see a 10 second setup? Apparently, we oh, can. Was that deep enough? It is. Well done. That is the absolute fastest. That was a Formula One pit stop. So uh, take me through your opener. You opened with what you planned on that yeah. day? Yeah, I took the opener as planned at 365, and uh, it was pretty much exactly where it was when I did openers, which is super on the line. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get it. I think it was two to one yeah. on depth. So uh, it felt easy. Uh, I was kind of a little bit jarred, like, oh shit, I don't know if I can go deeper. Yeah. But we took, uh, what did we take? Three, 
I want to say we took 380 for the second? No, no? I think it's 375. 375? Yeah. yeah. So that was a two and a half kilo meat PR, the 375. And uh, I had hit, I've hit that in training two or three times now. It's always been really smooth. And I think that weight is kind of almost like critical mass for that last little bit of depth. That seems to be about what I need to hit depth very convincingly yep. in the suit. So I loaded that, squatted it really well. Depth was there unquestionably. Um, and I think got three white lights on that one. So um, at that point I was kind of, as humming and hawing because I really wanted to squat over four. Yeah. And looking back at the 390, <laughs> I probably had 410 that day, if not more. Yeah. It just wasn't like the third attempt didn't, didn't even phase me kind of thing. Well, so, like, that kind of brings us into the third, uh, the third lift. What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was a little rushed. Um, I think it was, I want to say it was the Egyptian or the Iranian lifter. There was a lifter it's, anyways. It's the Iranian, yeah. Was it the Iranian lifter? Yeah. So he went up to the desk and the scoring table allowed him to scratch his attempt like two minutes before he was supposed to take it. Yeah. Now, you should, you should either put in an attempt or scratch. There shouldn't, you shouldn't have the ability to change what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so what should have happened is they should have let the attempt run because he was in the order two or three out from where I was. So we started wrapping my knees, same time as usual. We had the three lifters and then all of a sudden the Iranian lifter, lifter dropped. So we had two lifters. So we were in the middle of wrapping my knees and it was like bars loaded. So I had my headphones in. I don't even know if I knew. I got up, I got to the, the ramp and started wrapping my wrists and I heard Joe Capolino. I think Ray was also yelling at me. There were a few people that were like, don't wrap your wrists. Yeah. But I just heard Joe go, ditch the fucking wrist wraps. <laughs> so I had one wrap done. I looked at the clock and I think there was about 18 seconds for me to get the squat command. Yeah. So I ripped the wrap off, took the other one off, just like threw them on the ground and kind of charged out in hopes that I could get the squat command. I think by the time I got under the bar, it was like eight to 10 seconds and got, managed to get the, the, rat, or the, sorry, the squat command with about three or four seconds left on the clock. It was, uh, and it was actually at two seconds. Was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, I think that might be my new proudest squat. Like I'm pretty, pretty stoked <laughs> on being able to like come out, set that up and hit like, I don't know, what would that be? A 17 and a half kilo meat PR yeah. with, uh, you know, with authority yeah. <laughs> in two seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, I was stoked. You look pretty happy about it. Yeah, yeah. I think I danced off the platform yeah. like an idiot right after <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So, Bryce Brochick from Canada, 235. I ain't trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and bad and all around. The more things I lost, the more I found. One thing I taught myself to do, no matter the problem, refuse to lose. So how you want it, man? You can choose. If you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse. See, I walk in slow and ignite the room. Like fire, everything I touch, I consume. I'm getting up while y'all just... That's a very, very nice first one in and the last one out. Whoever owns the place gotta drag me out. Ha. In me, I trust. Yeah, I smell like success. This Elon Musk, huh? Everybody oh. wanna be like us. We don't stop, cause the top just ain't enough, huh? I ain't hey. never gave no fucks. I ain't scamming. You know black men no blush, huh? I think that looks Can't good. Ready to fight well. on this night. You better just run for your life. Yeah, I mean, that, that takes us into bench attempts. So uh, run me through how that went, starting with your opener. Bench, I feel like, was kind of uneventful. Um, I feel like I maybe could have taken a little more on my third, but like opener touched how it should, pressed how it should, everything felt good. Um, one thing that happened at Nationals was I kept kind of misgrooving and just not. There's a very distinct transition coming out of the shirt into kind of the tricep lockout. And I messed that up on all three attempts at nationals and my yep. shoulders were just felt torn apart afterwards. And Worlds was just absolutely the opposite. Everything felt nice and smooth off the chest. Yeah. Moved really well. We were on the new Alico bench. So they have a new bench pad that's just hard plastic. It's not like padding and leather oh. covering. Yeah. Uh, and it has like a strip of grip. Okay. Almost like 
like an A7 shirt or something, but it has like a strip of, of extra grippy stuff on there. Yeah. So it felt really good. It felt really sticky and really solid. I was a big fan of the new, the new Alico rack overall. Yeah. Um, and so that was a little bit weird, like sitting down on it. It doesn't sink at all. You're like, oh, this is, you know, just kind of not what I was used to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything went super well. Took, I think, I think the planned jump on the second attempt and then went five kilos shy of the planned on third. I had hoped for 260, probably could have done it, um, but 255, you know, slowed down a little bit, you know, yeah. I probably had more, but again, I just, in the back of my head consistently, it's, it's worlds, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm trying to build the total. It's like, if I know I've got 255, absolutely 100%, and 260 is like a 70 to 80% chance. Yeah. Like I just did, I didn't want to miss. Yeah. I didn't want to miss anything because that's, that's just kilos on the total. Um, and I had that goal of, of trying to hit the Canadian total, trying to place as high as I could. So that was kind of behind my conservative uh, attempt selection that day. Yeah. Bryce Brochek, Canada, 365. Won't you come and see what it's like? Living by the rules that you write. You ain't not those lavish delights. Now you had no back in sight. All the little lies you recite just makes all the savage unite. Usually I'm very polite, but I'ma get savage tonight. You gonna let a dog be nice. Every single dog gonna bite. You might think I'm wrong, but I'm right. Just let it get a strong appetite. I'ma let it breathe just a little. Give it to you strong, heavy metal. I don't make a sound when I strike. You better just run for your life. Oh, he just juggled at the top a little bit. Don't think he got it. No. This everything he's got. Oh, it yeah. He does it kilo total. Run for your life. Krocek has done his job. He's put up the biggest Canadian total ever. Yeah. All he can do now is sit back and wait and see how things unfold. I guess that brings us into deadlifts. Ugh. Um, I don't know, something looked weird there. Yeah. Like, it's, it's funny because your squats looked really good that day. Your bench looked really good that day. So I was expecting deadlifts to just fly. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I just, I could not catch my balance with those heavier loads. I think training was pretty light. I think the heaviest pull I did in training was 375. And, you know, that was right between first and second attempt. Probably on par with how heavy my training got for my squat and my bench, but I just could not catch my balance. Every rep was locked out, out here, it felt like. And uh, there's probably some, you know, sort of onus on the, the platform. Yeah. I really dislike those Alico platforms. Like, yeah. please, please build a new platform. But uh, at the same time, I don't want to use that as an excuse and be like, oh, it's the platform. I totally yeah. would have had it. Because I just didn't feel like I was deadlifting super well either. Yeah. Um, it, didn't, so, it didn't look like your deadlifts. No, no. And I'm lucky I got the attempts that I did, I think. My first and my third that I got were on the line. Yeah. As to whether they were locked out, as to whether there was downward movement. Yeah. Like those were generous calls, I think. Um, so my first was 365, I think. Yeah. Um, and again, like almost bobbled at the top. Locked it out way on my toes. My calves were like cramping from trying to hold it. Um, my second one definitely just like dipped on the way up because I think I jumped 385 for my second yeah. and it dipped. There's tons of strength there. I felt like if I could have figured out how to balance myself better, I could have had, you know, maybe that elusive 400 day. But, uh, and then, so when I went to retake for my third, again, the, third, the only thing running through my head was like, what's the biggest total I can put up? Yeah. And I knew, okay, 385 was easy. I just messed it up. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't easy, but the strength was there for 385. And I had a feeling that if I had gone heavier, that added difficulty would have worked against my ability to technically sort that lift out. Yeah. So I loaded the 385 again, got it. Um, 
Rob had them move the bar way to the back of the platform, and sometimes that helps those platforms get a little divoted. Yeah. Um, Rob was saying from the side that the stage looked like it was on, the whole stage looked like it was on a little bit of an angle, and it's like, yeah. eh, I don't know how much of that is just Rob trying to make me feel better in yeah. the day. And I think that's good coaching is to be like, no, 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 you got this, you got this. There's like some other stuff, but don't worry about it. You got this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you look at, uh, what's his name, Beachkov? Yeah. His third deadlift, which beat yours by two, two and, and a half, half kilos, yeah. It looks solid. Like there was he didn't no have balance any problems issues, with it. and that's exactly what I keep coming back to. Yeah, is is like okay, the best lifters pulled on that platform, pulled more than me. Uh, Julian Johansson, uh, the Icelandic 120 yeah. plus, who went for Kristoff's record. Yeah, he pulled more than me too, and it's like. It's not the platform, because if it was if it was just the platform, everybody would be messing up. Yeah. It's me. Yeah. Like I need to figure out how to solve those balance issues. So yeah. Mike and I have a couple ideas on things that we'll try to do moving forward. Yeah. Um, but overall, like you know, that poor craftsman blames his tools kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. So I need to work on my balance. I need to work on probably getting a little heavier yeah. in training to make sure that those things are there. Um, and also hope that platforms are more favored to me in the future, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that kind of leads me into the question of like, what's next? What's your plan? Uh, I, I, think, so, uh, I think I heard the announcer saying that that was a all-time CPU total record. Yeah. Did you know that when you were deadlifting? Your third? Uh, I didn't, no, oh. not off the top of my head. I kind of, I think I had that in the back of my head somewhere that like, I was getting close to the all-time CPU record. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I got off the platform and kind of looked at the math and the total that I knew. Yeah. Um, I think Rob might have mentioned it actually when I was picking, when I was deciding what to do for my third, third deadlift. Um, but yeah, so I was super happy with that. I mean, there were a few things that I was really proud of. Number one, I came from B flight and managed to play sixth overall. You know, so I climbed seven, nom seven places based on where I was nominated. And that for me is really good. Um, I was still light, you know, I was 115 kilos um, I w that I weighed in at. And uh, I think I left kilos on the platform for sure. So there's more there. I got more weight to gain. Um, I came from B flight, which really limits the amount that you can, Yeah. like there's no jostling for position. Yeah. There's no way I could have put on 390 and tried to like, you know, jostle with Bishkov a little bit for that deadlift gold. Yeah. He just like saw that. And it was also the total record that made him go 387 and a half. It was kind of a double whammy. But, yeah. um, you know, in the future, I think that total will give me enough to be nominated in A group so that I can be in the mix yeah. and, and hopefully make some moves. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about Worlds next year. I think there's a lot of potential for me to really shake it up and, and hopefully end up on the podium. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, that's the big goal because then that's the ticket to World Games. Um, if not, it comes down to... Um, regional championships, so North Americans, Commonwealths, things like that. And after that, it goes to points, which I think points-wise, being so light in the category and placing relatively high also gives me a bit of a, a decent shot at yeah. qualifying for World Games. Um, but right up next is Nationals. So um, I, I'll hopefully be pretty contested at this Nationals, or at least a little bit contested. Um, <laughs> but uh, Eric Willis. Um, who's been the 120 Raw world champion. Um, he and I faced off once before at 2014, 2013 yep. Nationals, and he beat me. He came in first, I came in second in the 105s. Um, he posted 1,017 total or so. I think it was 1,000, yeah, I think you're right, somewhere around there. Yeah, 1,017-ish um, total, but he was also like 130. So he's gotta cut some weight, I gotta gain some weight, and we'll see, we'll see. I hope it's I hope it's a real good matchup because I love that yeah. like competing. So yeah. I'm looking forward to nationals, and then 2020 worlds in Stavanger, and I mean, that's all a ways out. But for now, I'm just trying to like get in, back into the swing of training and not feel like a cripple from not training for two years. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, for the for the record, for the record, for the record, for the record.
for the rugged. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got up price on y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hate. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball and age. I'm flipping the bars. I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the all record off record. I still count wins when they got it. All record off record. I let them take advantage. I was wildin'. All record off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. All record off record. I still want the act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young and blooming said it. Less impressions also coming to it. I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it. I complete ejected, but the moves are looser than I'm barely moving. But I'm still gon' boost them. I can't work on winnings when I know you're losing. So I work the winners and they throw the deuces. Guess I have to pivot shooting the bazookas for the facts. I need racks, paper cash, fuck a tax. That's a joke. Tell them laugh. Uncle Sam, fuck out the bag.